Mindfulness is a holistic philosophy that offers ideas and practices related to living our lives in more meaningful and effective ways. It encourages us to live our lives focused in the present moments without negative judgments and with appreciation for our experiences. Mindful people are self-aware. They notice what is happening internally and externally. They can make effective decisions about their feelings, thoughts, and behaviors. With practice, we can learn to be mindful more of the time in all areas of our lives. Mindfulness can become a trait that we possess. To develop mindfulness, we foster curiosity about our feelings and experiences while being self-compassionate, which requires non-judgmental self-awareness. The effects of becoming more mindful can include improved attention, empathy, patience, self-knowledge, open-mindedness, and appreciation of others. Understanding that negative thoughts do not have to be true and can be viewed as passing events, a mindful person is more capable of flexible thinking. Mindfulness is often understood as activity that encourages awareness to emerge through paying attention on purpose, non-judgmentally, in the present moment. But it is not just about practicing present moment awareness. Mindfulness encourages us to practice patience, open-mindedness, trust, gratitude, and acceptance. It encourages us to be an engaged citizen who recognizes the interconnections of all life on earth. Mindfulness to me means paying attention to what's going on around you, but also what's going on inside and being able to um, respond and regulate your emotions based on what you're feeling. Mindfulness is a place that's neutral and unwavering. It's a place that I can go to at any time to kind of create some distance between myself and my thoughts and feelings. In this way, I'm able to really see how my mind works. I kind of think of it as taking a picture, a really steady picture of my mind at any given moment. But beyond that, for me, uh, mindfulness is about its concepts of trust and self-compassion and loving kindness. Mindfulness isn't just about being relaxed or being happy. It's about being aware of what's going on. And for me, sometimes that means acknowledging darker emotions and the positive emotions. So that's helped me with emotional regulation Allowing yourself to be with whatever experiences arise with that gentle, kind curiosity and just exploring as experiences arise and go away. At first, one of my biggest challenges for the seated meditation was falling asleep. I just fell asleep a lot, so an easy trick for that was keeping your eyes open during the meditation or just softening your gaze. Another challenge was for a long time, I would sort of sit in silence and ask myself, what am I doing here? Am I being mindful? What's going on? Maybe I should make something else for dinner and my thoughts would run amok, and I didn't really understand what the point of mindfulness was, especially the seated meditations. Eventually I had an aha moment where I was like, oh, and now I'm going to focus about my breath again. And that's when I realized, oh, that's, that's all it is. There's a, a myth in practicing mindfulness that it's about achieving a clear mind. And with that, there's always the struggle of trying to push away thoughts that come up. 
Really, mindfulness is about noticing what comes up for you, accepting it, and letting it pass without judgment. When I started mindfulness-based cognitive therapy training, they really explained that the whole practice is that we have these thinking minds and it's about being in the thinking mind, recognizing that and coming back to present moment awareness. So all those times I'd been trying in the past, I was practicing mindfulness. It was just very difficult and it was the understanding that really shifted everything and being able to sit with, okay, the thoughts are there letting them go and coming back to the body. And that was really what was challenging, continues to be challenging in my practice, where there are days that, you know, that thinking mind is just overtaking my practice and other days where my practice is really beautiful and I can come into the body and, and be there. When I first started practicing mindfulness, you know, my supervisor and I noticed that I was quite judgmental on myself. And I was hard on myself and my language is often negative. And what we did is we used mindfulness to become aware of the language I was using against myself and to be self-compassionate with myself and to actually reduce anxieties that I was feeling around school and life circumstances and so on and so forth. And as a result, I feel I've become calmer, more aware, and then it gives me the ability to make different choices when I feel those emotions arise. And the awareness is the key piece for me. And I can practice that self-compassion and loving kindness with myself. And from that, I can practice that with others. The formal sitting practice is very challenging for a lot of people. So sometimes doing the arts activities, you don't really, under, you don't really realize what you're, that you're learning mindfulness until the discussion piece after with, afterwards. And then we're talking about how, to, how you felt during that activity. And then as the weeks go on, we kind of notice that the participants um, start during the activity saying, this is how it's making me feel, as opposed to just the conversation that follows after. So it really makes it um, easy and kind of a fun, uh, non-threatening way for people to learn about the concepts in order to decide if that's something that they can carry on in their personal lives. participant who came into the group um, wearing all black with hoodie on head down um, really thought that it was going to be hard to get her engaged and when she drew pictures and she did she'd crumple them up so we didn't get any sharing from her and that went on kind of week after week and we welcomed her and we continued the program as usual and over the weeks there was a slow but obvious shift out of kind of the darker clothes. The hoodie went off. There was just a more of a presence in the room versus, you know, she was like a fly on the wall before. Um, and this was really this kind of blossoming experience. And towards the end of the program, she shared, uh, like in the last couple of, of sessions, she shared this picture expressing, so really gaining some self-understanding, but expressing how she was hanging on by like a thread. Um, in her life and that her life was difficult, but there was a self-awareness, there was a self-compassion, and um, her CAS worker had invited or asked us if we could, any way we could have her for another session. We had a very, very challenging participant. Uh, he had gone through uh, a very rough life and he had a lot of externalizing behaviors. He wasn't getting social cues. So it was a very, it was a very challenging time in the beginning of the groups. And what we did, a supervisor and I talked about it, Dr. Kaholik mentioned that maybe I want to be his little, his buddy and coach him through the re remaining weeks of the groups. And by the end, we weren't sure how much uh, of the concept, concepts that he retained and what he got until the follow-up interview. And I was absolutely proud when the parent was telling me that he was practicing it at home. 
He was practicing the arts-based activities at home. His relationships were much better. His awareness of emotions were much better. And it told us, even someone with maybe some intellectual delays, mindfulness was accessible. Not only accessible, that it was used outside of the group room. And that gave me the clue that mindfulness is accessible to anyone.